Okay, been recording for five, five uh, seconds or so now. Um, how are you this morning? Feeling raring to go, or the rain making everyone feel a little bit sleepy? Or, um, I am hopefully going to be guided by you a lot in this one. Okay, we're going to continue the live programming stuff from last time. And uh, as you'll see in a moment, I've got a few kind of directions I want us to head in, but I'm going to try and open up some possibilities for, for you to guide the, the construction of this little game, which will then continue in the tutorial. So the, you know, the code is about to land in your lap on Friday for you to do some more stuff to it. Um, uh, but first of all, uh, kind of housekeeping sort of stuff. Um, I still need to sort out the games and animation tile on here. I know we've been using games as a, an animation as a vehicle to teach you more codey sorts of stuff, um, but that, 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 that's with a view to it helping in, in your future units. Um, but so some of the stuff is starting to appear there, uh, but I still need to arrange it into that nice little neat table sort of the PDFs and the, and the HTMLs that, uh, uh, that Mitchell does for the other topics. Okay, let's jump across then, and let's see here. Right, where we got up to was we had our monster sitting there, and we had it pulsing maliciously, but um, not doing very much. And so there it is, it's just sitting there going bloop, 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 bloop. And uh, the next thing that we're gonna start to try and do is start to give our monster some strategy, start to let it move around and go on patrol and things like this. And eventually we're going to want it to go on patrol and when it gets close enough to a player, start going and trying to hunt down the player. Um, so, it's a terrible segue into, okay, what sorts of coody things uh, can I, can I uh, show you based on this? Uh, now, I kind of nicknamed this from state to strategy. So far, we've, okay, we've talked about classes to organize our code, and we're going to grow and evolve it. We're going to try and still keep it organized. We're going to try and still keep it in our head the idea that functions do one thing, so it's clear to us, and later, so it's clear to other people editing our code. So for instance, you on Friday editing my code, because I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to do stuff with it. Um, but we've also so far been talking about state just in terms of values, ints, x and y locations, time, things like this. In this case, when we want to get our monster to move, um, suddenly some of our state is going to be about action. Some of our state is going to involve some behavior. And um, so the question is, how can you make behavior a value? How would you guys recommend making behavior a value? So that you can set it to this behavior, or then set it to that behavior later on, when this monster changes between I'm wanting to just go patrolling and I'm wanting to go hunt down my player. Any thoughts for those of you who've done object-oriented stuff before? Not quite sure, we might be starting to head into new territory. That's okay, that, that's my measure, measure of the class. Are people going, oh gosh, not this again. Um, or are, 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 um, are we starting to head into a little bit of new territory? Okay, the trick we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna put our behavior into an object. And then to change which behavior we're doing, we just have to point to a different object. So we've, if we've got, an object that has a method on it, and uh, we have a few different objects that have that method on it, we can switch which one it is. And then we can just call into our current state dot behave or whatever it is, and that will route to the behavior that goes with whichever state that we've got at the moment. That might not be clear just yet. Hopefully it will be clear as I start to uh, try, and, try and code this. Do interrupt with questions, especially if things are becoming not clear. All right, so let's stop our character blobbing around. And at the moment, this monster, it's really just sitting there. This is the only thing that changes its location, and its draw just does this. But I would like it now to start having, and I'm going to start with some actions. I'd like it to be able to sit there idle, not doing anything, okay. 
but I'd also like it to be able to be moving one square in a direction. And so what I'm going to say is let's put in our, 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 our state that's going to have some kind of behavior in it, and let's call it a monster action. But at the moment, it says, what earth is a monster action? I don't know what a monster action is. New word to me. The, type, the class monster action does not exist. And here, I'm going to define it as the smallest thing that I know how to, to define. Well, I know I want this thing to do some stuff, so I know it's going to be something about some methods, some functions, uh, but I don't know quite what yet. Things that can have methods, things that can have functions are classes. And if we want to have just some kind of a contract, OK, I want to have some stuff in there. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet. I'm just going to start off by defining an interface for it. I'm just going to say interface monster action. All right. Now, there is a type called monster action. And already, this line here is happy. It says, oh yes, I know what a monster action is. It's things that implement that inf interface at the top of, at the, top of the file. Uh, the, that interface doesn't do anything yet. Um, let's start off with the monster action that is doing nothing, sitting there idling. And so let's just say we have a class uh, monster idle, and it implements monster action. All right, still not doing anything, but now we know there is such a thing as idling. And in our constructor over here, we can say if we want that this dot action is the monster is idle. All right, nothing's really going to have changed because nothing's linked up to much, but that still compiles and it runs. And we've said we've now got this concept of monsters having some kind of an action. All right. Now, the one that I'd like to have next, so um, I'm still not quite sure what, what functions to put in that. I'm going to decide that in a minute. So let's think about, because monster idle, that's not really going to tell me what functions I need in here. Let's think about what's needed in our monster moving action. All right, let's go to the other one and let's run it just so we can see one moving and think about what might be needed. So here's one I made earlier and there it is moving. What stuff to you looks different about the fact that it's moving than the fact that it's not moving? In terms, of, in terms of code behavior, can I pick someone out to ask them something trivially simple or, you know, you pick the, the, the most obvious thing you can see about how this code is behaving differently? A person with a bandana on. Um, it looks like it's bouncing off the walls. Yeah. Um, it looks well spotted, well spotted. Uh, I didn't think you'd get that one that early, because we'll, 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 we'll come to that one later. So as well as once it's moving, it's doing something around deciding what direction to go next. And it's having a look at, uh, can I move in that direction? Is there a wall there? If it's not passable, I can't go that way. OK. And that's about deciding which way to move. For the moment, I'm, I'm not even going to go as far as deciding which way to move. I'm just, just let's assume that it's always moving, that one's moving west. Let's assume that our monster is moving one square west. What stuff does it need to do differently than when it was just drawing itself pulsating in place? Can I ask someone for pull me in a head in a in a in a scarf? <laughs> Okay, I'm being, I'm being cheeky, and I, I think people are embarrassed to say the things that are slightly too simple, such as it's no longer just drawing itself in the middle of the square. It's sometimes it's got to change where it's drawing itself. Um, all right. 
maybe it's too early in the morning to go fishing for answers from the audience too, too much, especially when I've already, I'm doing the terrible thing is I've got a few in mind that I'm, I'm, I'm fishing for. Um, so one of the things that we're going to need to do, this suddenly doesn't just need to sit there drawing itself in the middle of the square. Depending on how far through moving it is, it's going to need to draw itself in a slightly different location. Um, so what I'm going to suggest that means is that, uh, sorry, that's one of the, let's say, particles, because that was one of their examples. Uh, wait. Where's mine gone? Not that one. I'm getting my win windows all tangled. There we go. Let's, uh, except I don't want it maximized, otherwise it's going to do strange things when I try and run it. Um, so one of the things I'm going to suggest is that this draw method, well, OK, that looks like how you draw yourself for idling. But, if you're drawing yourself for moving, the location you're drawing yourself isn't quite the same. Over one second, or however long it is, you need to kind of be moving left one square. Uh, and then once you've moved left one square, we probably need to go and update your XY position for, 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 the, actual, for the actual game state. So I'm going to suggest that some of the stuff that's going to need to happen inside our monster actions is we're going to need a way for them to draw themselves. And in this case, because I'm defining a different object here, these aren't the monster themselves. These are going to be states of the monster. I am going to pass the monster in to the draw method. And I'm going to have some kind of on complete. What do we do when this action is finished? And, well, actually, if I'm talking about whether this action is finished or not, maybe I'd better be able to find out, um, is this finished? All right, monster idling. I reckon monster idling, because now we're going to have to fulfill that contract for these little classes. I reckon for idling, we're always finished. Doesn't matter when you tell us to stop idling. Just, yeah, whenever. And I reckon that void on complete for idling, well, it's idle. That's probably not going to do very much. And so then the question is, what on earth goes on in draw of monster M? Okay, so let's just put a comment and say, mm, I'm probably going to need to put something in here. Down here, this one's going to need some stuff, but this one's going to start needing to do things. So let, let's fill in the one that needs to do things first, because that's more interesting. Well, if we're moving left, then how far left we, we are depends on where we've got to. Um, so how far left we are, in a sense, that depends on when we've started. So I'm going to suggest that we need something that says, OK, when did this action begin? So I can work out how far through the animation we are. And so let's give this a constructor. And let's say that, well, when, we've, when did this begin? It began right now, right when we called the constructor. Right when we created this object, that is when we began moving. OK. This draw here, let's grab that. And for the moment, let's just paste that in here because we'll start seeing how we, need to, how we need to modify this. How is it going to complain? Well, first thing it says is calc shape isn't here. Calc shape was defined down on my monster. But actually, that's pretty easy to move. If we're moving all of the drawing up onto, um, in, into our actions, 
then what we can do is we can just go and grab our calc shape and we can go and if we stick it in the interface Oops, what have we got? Uh, oh, sorry, let's not stick it in. Uh, actually, let's, what I'll do, I could stick that in the interface, but I need to make it static, pretty much. Um, let's leave it on the monster. Let's leave it on the monster, but let's say that that's now a static function that creates it for a monster M. I'm not sure if I'm actually doing this the same way I did in the example that I did before. Shall I just have a look and see, did I do it that way before or did I do it the other way before? It doesn't matter, but I'm suddenly curious. I'm suddenly, no, that's right, okay. I am overcomplicating things. I could move that around. Let's not worry about moving that around. Overcomplicating things. Decided, no, 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 that's too much of a pain. That's too much of a pain. Let's keep calc shape where it was. Calc shape down here leaving it on a monster. Let's just worry about the fact that, look, we've got the monster here, and let's say m dot calc shape. It can stay on the monster, and we can just call it on the monster, because we've got a reference to the monster here. All right. But we need millis, and I am getting gabbly this morning, aren't I? I'm losing my scroll position, and I'm accidentally shrinking the screen when I may need to be growing it. Right. Okay, well, stop being so clumsy. Um, right, where was my... There it is. So Monster Idle, it's going to need to do pretty much the same thing. So let's just... Let's grab that code for the Monster Idle one, just to show this one, because this is going to remain almost identical. And in here... We're just going to say that my shape is m dot calc shape. Use the thing that was defined on the monster, and we're still going to just call it. All right, so monster idle should still be kind of happy. So we should now be able to say action dot draw of this. And if our monster is idle, it should go straight through to our monster idle draw method, and nothing should have changed. I'm just going to click run because there we go. Unexpected token void, which line are we? Here we go. I thought that had happened. I accidentally knocked out this. I accidentally knocked out some code and suddenly some stuff wasn't compiling. And down here, monster idle. There we go. This now needs to get the monster's X position and the monster's Y position. All right. So apologies for the gabbliness for a moment. We're still doing the same thing. But we've moved a method. We've moved draw. So draw is now being delegated to whatever our current action is. And that's going to do the drawing. OK, so we've got this for monster idle. And we're at the moment, we're only ever creating monster idle. Let's give it a comment. We probably ought to do that. The action for when our monster is not doing anything. And this one, let's give this one a comment. And so this is going to be the action for when our monster is moving one square north, south, east, or west. All right. Well, for the moment, let's just put the code, that code in. And so that, at the moment, is identical to idling. So that's not, that's not going to do anything different yet. Now we need to work out moving it one square north, south, east, or west. OK, this is where suddenly we need to know what direction are we going in. How would you like to model what direction we're going in? Uh, 
we've got four values. What, 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 what would you go for? Sorry? Okay, uh, right, but, but what type should we put in there? We've got to keep a variable that's got what direction we're going in. Int, all right, let's go for int. Okay, and so monster moving is now going to need to take int direction, and we'll say that this dot direction is direction. Okay, which way do you want which ints to be? Okay, so we and for the moment I'm just going to document that here, and we'll just do this via convention. North, unless we go. Oh, sorry. Two is south, three is west. Okay. Uh, now, in fact, I think we're going to... No, 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 I'll come back to that later. I was just thinking, we're going to have to remember what those numbers mean in an awful lot of places. So one of the things you will find that people will sometimes do is they will define a little class just so they can define what the ints are. So they might find a direction class, so they can just so they can say static int north equals one. And they can then say direction dot north uh, instead of just saying one. Um, we'll do that as some refactoring, as some cleaning up of our code later on. All right. Now, when we're drawing our shape, how long would you like our, our move to take? Should we go for a second, thousand milliseconds? Sort of standardish amount of time. So we go long duration is 1,000. So when we draw it, the first thing I want to work out is how far through our movement animation are we? And so here I'm going to say that float, and I'm just going to call it fraction, is, and what was it? It was, so let, well, let's start off with the time. Let's call this elapsed, and that is going to be the time now minus when we began. And so how far through our, um, uh, how far th uh, uh, through our animation we are, well, let's say that that is going to be our elapsed time divided by and... Well, in this case, I'd like our duration, uh, I, I, I want this to be a float. I don't want this to be an integer. Um, so let's go divide by 1,000.0 just to make sure it comes out as a, as a floating point number. Okay. The shape, well, the fill can stay the same, and the shape can stay the same. It can stay blobbing. It's just where I want to draw it that's going to change. And so I now need to work out some kind of, should we call it an offset that we need to, need to draw it in each direction. Um, so let's say we have offset x and offset y. And this depends on which direction we're going in. Have you been shown switch statements? Who's seen a switch statement before? One, two people have seen switch statement. Who's not seen a switch statement before? Almost everyone else. Okay. So this is a little bit of syntax that can be a bit shorter, and it's just a bit of Java syntax. So what we could say, for instance, is if our direction is equal to north, then offset x, offset y is equal to whatever. Else, if direction equals, equals, sorry, north was zero, haha, ha, I'm already getting my numbers wrong. That's why we tend to put them in constants. And I could do that, um, but somewhere along the line some people decided, you know what, all those ifs and else ifs are getting a bit verbose. Let's just have a shorter way of writing that. And so let's call it switch on direction. And so we can then just say case north and I want you to do this. What's what I've written underneath case north. So this is going to be the same as a whole bunch of if else's. And what do we get? Uh, if we're heading north, we're not going to want to offset anything in the x direction because north is up and down the page. 
Offset y, oops, uh, let's capitalize those, is going to be what? Fraction times, um, what was it? Tile dot sprite height. Except the positive y axis in most GUIs is down the page. So north, we want it actually to be, uh, up, uh, we want that to be negative. And we need to cast that to an int. And then, funny thing with switch statements is we have to say break. Otherwise, it's going to go and go into the next one. It's a thing that's out of C programming, but I just thought I would take the excuse to show you this odd bit of syntax. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing this as a whole bunch of if else's. Um, but excuse to show you a bit more syntax, I'll show you a bit more syntax. In this case, if we're going east, offset x needs to be that, but positive. Offset y is 0. Break. Uh, south. South is going to look very much like north, except that we're going the opposite direction. So that's going to change sign. And west is going to look very much like east except in the other direction. Now, what if for some reason we got five in there? What do you reckon we should do if somehow we've ended up with five? Because this is an int. It could be anything right up to millions. It's a choice. It's a question. I've got a suggestion otherwise. All right. At the moment, offset x and offset y, they're not being used. Let's go use them. Let's put the offset in. And let's put offset y. Oops. Offset y plus. And I have a red squiggly line under them. I have a red squiggly line under them that says... The variable offset x might not have been initialized because I've declared it up here and I've initialized it in case 0, case 1, case 2, case 3. But I haven't said what to do with it if it's anything else. Just as you could put an else at the end of a, of a, uh, a, a chain of if-elses, that you, we can put a default case in here. But the question really is, what do we want to do there? I reckon that if we're in this state where our direction isn't one of the ones we catered for, we're in, an, in some kind of illegal situation. How did we get into this state? Something has broken to put us into this state. And so I reckon let's throw a new illegal state exception. So just as if you do something wrong in your code, sometimes you can get a null pointer exception, we can also write stuff that will throw exceptions, that will say something has gone wrong here. And so this is me telling the code something's gone wrong here, and I want that to be the message that you print out at the, 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 at the console when it breaks. Um, there's things that you can do later on to catch and handle these exceptions, but we're not going to go that far. All right. Let's run that. I still haven't wired up a monster moving, so this still isn't going to do anything different, but it compiles and it runs. Let's, let's just try it for a moment. Let's see what happens if now we don't do monster idle, we do monster moving of one. Whoa! It's moving right! It's moving right! It's moving right! <laughs> Um, so we've got it so that just by changing it from monster idle to monster moving of one, the behavior's changed. But you'll notice things like 
I haven't actually done anything about finishing moving, so it is just going and going and going and going and see. Uh, it's off the edge of the screen. All right. Maybe we ought to start handling this, have you finished yet? Um, so, is finished. At the moment, it's saying it's always finished. Um, so, down here, Boolean is finished, just returns true. I reckon this is now finished if the current time minus when I began is bigger than my duration. I reckon that's when we're finished. But we're not yet calling that. We're not yet um, doing anything with it. I reckon once our animation is complete, we need to update uh, our monster's x and y position. So on complete, update the monster's x and y location. And I think this is going to look really similar to this. I think it's going to be a switch on direction. That depending on which direction we're going in, we've got to change, the, change these differently. So I'm going to grab that code, and I'm going to copy it down here. And suddenly, well, if we were heading north, we want to say that the monster's y position reduces by 1. If we we're heading east, the monster's x position increments by 1. If we're heading south, the monster's y position increments by 1. And if we're heading west, the monster's x position decrements by 1. And if it's anything else, again, explode. All right. So far, so good. We've written some code. Oh, we're not calling it. We're not calling it. So we're still just walking off to the right-hand side. OK. In which case, So our actions are happening, but the problem is that we're not transitioning between actions. We're not deciding when this action is finished, what do we want to do next? Um, so suddenly we've, got a, we've kind of got a new question. Um, so let's say here we go if action dot is finished, And mm, decide what to do next. Well, first of all, let's call action.onComplete. Just to make sure that, um, oops, and we've got to pass it this monster. Then, what should we do next? For the moment, just to check this is happening, Let's say this dot action is a monster idle. So now this should go right one and stop, because we've changed our action. We've changed from moving right to idling. OK, so now we've got a point in our code that we can start deciding what to do next. But this is where, if we kind of think about our monster, and it might be on patrol, or it might be hunting the player, Deciding what to do next depends on what our state is. So we're going to see the whole same pattern repeat. We're going to, what we do next is a bit of behavior that depends on our current state. So we're going to need another trait for that. So let's go up here. We've got our monster moving. And let's say we now have one, and I'm going to call it uh, sorry, interface, monster strategy. And how our monster decides what to do next, what action to do next. Well, if it's about what action to do next, I don't know about you, but I reckon that its key method is going to be um, something called next action. And if it's next action, I don't think it's going to be void. I think we're going to actually want to return a monster action. 
All right. So, hmm, we've declared that there is such a thing as a monster strategy. Um, let's create one. And let's start off with the monster patrolling strategy, because we haven't got a, um, a player to hunt down yet. And so this implements monster strategy. So it needs to implement the method that's in monster strategy. And for the moment, we can just go return new monster idle. Oops. What are, what's... Uh, oh, of course, sorry, I'm giving it the wrong parameters. And now, if I go down here and I say that, that we've got a monster strategy, And I can say that at the start, its strategy is monster patrolling. And then I can say that this is now strategy dot next action with this. And I can run that. And again, it's not going to do anything different yet. It's still just going to go right and keep patrolling, but I moved the point that the decision makes into our, uh, our monster patrolling class. So uh, we've just moved the code into the spot, but now we can think about what, what, what's it going to do. Um, so this is what I mean by, you know, step by step. We're building little things, but we're keeping them small, and we're thinking, what is the one thing that this, this bit of code is going to do? We don't have one great long tangly piece of code that's trying to, to represent everything. We don't have one function that's updating the draw location and deciding where to move next and... All right. Now, when we're wanting to decide what to do next, though, um, one of the questions we've got is, all right, how are we going to do that? What is our patrol route going to be? The one that I gave in the example, it just, if it's going in a direction, and it can keep going in a direction, it keeps going. Uh, and if it can't, it looks at what directions can it go in, and it picks one at random. Um, but we could do something else if you're keen to. If not, I will just kind of keep heading down the path of uh, least resistance, which is doing, doing the one that I prepared earlier at home. Um, any particular preferences to patrolling strategies? <coughs> no? No, everyone's asleep. <laughs> That's okay. um, all right. Let's set this very quickly, patrolling in the direction. Uh, and we'll just do the keep going in the direction that you've been going in. Um, so this is where we're going to need to start editing into other classes, because if I want to ask, can I keep going in the direction that I'm going in, that's not just about the monster. That's also about the map. Is that location ahead of me? Is it passable or not? Um, and so suddenly, I'm going to need to pop across to my game state, and I'm going to need to be able to ask this game state, is some particular square passable? And so let's put that one in here. Let's give it a comment. And so this is going to, well, where here we were drawing it, here we're, instead we're just wanting to ask it, is it passable? So that's a pretty small modification to our game state. It's just uh, a little method to see, oh, is that square passable? All right, 
So let's pop back into our monster patrolling. And let's, do, let's kind of do the next step up. Let's ask, is the next square in the direction that we were already going in passable? And I'm going to call this can continue. The uh, first thing I'm going to say is, well, we might not actually have been going anywhere. We might have been idling, in which case we can't continue in a particular direction because we weren't going in a direction. So first thing we might want to check is if m dot action is an instance of monster moving. Otherwise, definitely false. Now, if it's moving, we've got to work out what the next square is. And, oh, that's going to look very much like this, isn't it? Except our switch isn't now on, it's not just on direction, because we haven't got a direction yet. It's on um, the, monster's, the, uh, the monster moving's direction, which means that we will need to do something like that. So, Last move direction, well, OK, let's fill these in. Next x is, if we, were, if, we were, if we were moving north, then it's still just x. Next y is m dot y minus 1. East, m dot x plus 1. And let's copy and paste those and change the sign for south and west. And then, once we've worked out where it is, whether we continue, is going to be the game state dot can uh, dot is passable of next x next y but have I got another bug that it's not going to complain about game state there surely it's going to complain about the game state no OK, maybe it's picking up the game state off. Um, there we go. It's actually picking up the global game state. Sorry, I was, uh, I was assuming that it wouldn't. Um, because the next thing to say was going to be that we ought to pass the game state through. That's all right. For, well, no, let, let's go do that. Let's pass the game state through. Um, In which case, suddenly, uh, strategy next action needs to know the game state. And where's that? And in which case, we're going to need to pass, when we call draw, we're going to need to pass it through into the monster's draw. OK. 
So we did a little bit of threading the needle on, oop, hang on. Needed to do a little bit of threading the needle on passing parameters to where we wanted them to go, but we're back compiling and running, but we're still not doing anything different yet. Now, up here, we should be able to ask, can we continue in a particular direction? We should now be able to ask if can continue of the current game state and pass the monster, in which case return um, and in which case because we're going to want to reset the timer so that this doesn't still keep thinking it's finished, I'm going to want to return a new monster moving. And so I'm going to want to grab the last one and I know in this case it's a monster moving because I did the check down here, but I probably ought to, to wrap that in an instance of, but I'm going to be lazy for the moment. And let's just for the moment, if we can't, let's just return a new monster idle. So this should now keep moving till it hits a wall. Bang, it stops. Okay, so we're starting to evolve our, um, our moving around strategy. Um, I reckon, because I'm starting to see people going, mm, that's enough live coding for now. Uh, we're quite close to time. I reckon what I'm gonna do is the extra bit of code and I will stick it in for you before the tutorial. Uh, the extra bit of code is just in here, of which, uh, you know, if, if not, um, see which directions we could move in, and pick one at random. So I'm gonna write that little bit, and I will deliver this code to you with a few more comments in on Friday, and I'm going to ask you to do two things in the tutorial, and I'll do the video of the solution of it as well. The first one is I'm gonna ask you to write the player, and the player is going to look, well, a little bit like a, a monster, except you're controlling it with the X and Ys. And I just thought, as a bit of fun, let's make it like a little tank vehicle that, uh, if you like, you have to turn it before it can move, because that turning is gonna give the monster a chance to start catching up with you. Um, and the second thing that I'd like you to do uh, is, okay, we've done the monster patrolling strategy. Uh, now do the, if you get close enough, start chasing the player strategy. And we're not gonna worry about AIs on shortest path. I'm gonna suggest the very simple um, decision thing of if the player is north of you, go north. If the player is west of you, go west, uh, if you like. Um, so a really, really simple strategy. Um, but that will be, if you like, your first exercise in modifying someone else's code. One of the things they don't tell you about programming is you very, very rarely actually get to write a program of your own from scratch. Most places you go and work, they've already got their product that they're, uh, that they're selling, and they want you to write extra features for it and bits on top of it. Um, so this is gonna be like, you know, first exercise in modifying someone else's code to do what you want it to do. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording there and see if there's more, uh, if there's questions.